Don't be afraid if you are a vegetarian or vegan because it's very easy to um, make vegetarian or vegan. Um, just to remind you, we're open from 10 to 5 every day except Sundays we're open 10 to 4. Um, we can do curbside. We can let you into the store if you want to do some shopping. We do require a cloth face mask covering your nose and mouth to come in. Um, but that's pretty much it. And then you get to run in the store. Um, so I'm just going to get started here. Um, our recipe calls for four cups of chicken. I'm only doing about two here, but we won't worry about that too much. And I'm gonna just brown this up a little in its own little pan. Um, you don't really have to do this. You could just do it right in the pot with the rest of your stuff. Um, but I'm just gonna give it a little color here. Um, so I trimmed this and I cut these pretty small. Um, so they're gonna cook pretty well, but you don't have to cook them through because they're gonna cook in the stew um, with all your, your vegetables and stuff. So this is where we go from either meat to vegetarian, vegan. Um, if you don't wanna do chicken, you can do like a kind of a beef stew, just replace the chicken with beef or pork or whatever you want. You could do seafood um, and instead of the, the chicken stock, do a different stock, do beef stock for beef or, or whatever, um, or use vegetarian or vegan stock if you're doing vegetarian or vegan. Um, so if you are doing vegan, instead of using butter, you're going to want to use the same amount of oil, which is four tablespoons. And I'm just going to let that melt up a little bit with my onions. And you can probably hear the chicken sizzling over here. I'm just going to stir it up and I just put a little bit of oil in there. If you're going to do it right in the pot with your veggies, um, you don't need to add anything else. You can just do it in with the butter and the onions. And I'm just going to turn that down just a little bit. Try not to start any fires. And you can cut up your butter a little bit to make it melt faster if you want to, if you're in a hurry. Um, so what I love about this recipe, a couple things. One is it's super fast. It's really easy to do um, as long as you can cut up vegetables. And in fact, you don't even really have to do that. For example, I'm using frozen spinach that I just defrosted um, and frozen corn. If you have frozen veggies in your freezer, you can use those. If you have um, some zucchini or summer squash lying around that you haven't used up, you can throw that in. Um, I am doing a little bit, bit of butternut squash and carrot as well. So it's really whatever you have handy. Um, the recipe really only calls for onions, carrots, and celery, but like I said, you don't have to use those at all if you don't want to or if you don't have them on hand. Get another little stir. The nice thing is if you do do the chicken with your veggies, then all of these little cooked on bits here are where a lot of the flavor is. That's gonna go right into your soup. Um, just turning that right down to low. And the butter is starting to melt here. So, um, so you can make this with whatever you have on hand. If you have a little bit of chicken that you want to use up, um, leftover roasted chicken is great. Just shred it up and put that in. You'll put that in towards the end. Um, you could do seafood. Like I said, I'd probably do the seafood towards the end because usually shrimp or um, fish or whatever you have is going to cook really quickly. Um, but a nice seafood chowder stew with dumplings would be fantastic. And then um, since I'm putting spinach right in here, I'm not going to worry about having a salad with this, but you could just serve it with a nice green salad. You don't even need bread because the dumplings are your bread. Um, so great, nice thing to come home to if you've been out cross country skiing or snowshoeing, which we're not doing this year until we get some snow. but. Um, skating out, playing outside on a cold day, or if you 
have a really busy day and you just want to throw something together really quickly for dinner for your family. And they're great for leftovers. Um, I made some this weekend. I used chicken sausage instead of chicken um, and Brussels sprouts and spinach and butternut squash and it was fantastic and I've had that for lunch for the last couple of days. The dumplings hold up really well. Um, they can get a little soggy after a while, but the flavor is still really good. All right, so that's, my butter's almost melted and my onions are starting to become translucent. So I'm gonna add my garlic. I don't wanna brown my garlic too much, but I do wanna get a little of the flavor in there. Let that go for a sec. And then I'm gonna add my harder vegetables, my carrots and my squash. And this is gonna be really pretty with all these oranges and yellows. Like sunrise stew. And get those nice and covered with the butter because the next thing we're gonna do is add our flour. So that was four tablespoons of butter and I'm adding four tablespoons of flour. And again, I'm just gonna let this coat the veggies and let it cook just a little bit. And so what I'm making here, um, whenever you put oil and flour or butter and flour together to use as a thickener, it's called a roux, R-O-U-X, it's a French word. And that is gonna thicken our liquid that we put in which is going to be in this case our chicken stock and it's not going to be super super thick um it's going to be a little bit more soupy but it's going to be a good a good consistency to have with our dumplings so i've got four cups of chicken stock um and i just used better than bouillon chicken um chicken base chicken bouillon base and some water, but you can use, you know, any kind of chicken stock that you like or bed stock or whatever that you can buy at the store or homemade. And that is gonna cook turn it back up to high. I'm gonna add, I have here just some dried oregano and um, uh, rosemary in there and I'm gonna plop that in just to add a little flavor. And because I'm using the Better Than Bouillon, it's already got salt in it and some good flavor. So I'm not gonna bother to add any more salt. I'll taste it right before it's served. And then if I feel like it needs a little bit more, I'll add it or just tell people to add their own. And I'm gonna throw the corn in there. You don't even need to defrost the corn. The spinach I defrosted. Um, you can squeeze out the liquid if you want to. I'm just going to add it in. It's just extra flavor. So we've got onion, garlic, carrots, butternut squash, and spinach in here, and corn. And this is going to thicken up a little bit. I'm going to let that go for a sec, and I'm just going to mix up dumplings. And the dumplings are super easy. This is two cups of flour. I'm gonna put some herbs in here, you don't have to. I just figured putting some in there, I might as well put them in here too. It just adds a little bit more flavor. Um, I've got four teaspoons, so two cups of flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, not soda, but powder. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt. You would add more or less, depending on how you like it and just mix that up just a little bit and then i'm going to add some milk to this again if you're doing this vegan or vegetarian if you don't want dairy in it or if you're non-dairy um you can use coconut milk or soy milk or um, almond milk just pour that on in there and we're just going to stir it together and that's gonna to come together and make kind of a gloppy batter, which is what we want because these are called drop dumplings. And that means we're just gonna drop them right into the top of the 
stew. And this is gonna take, um, probably with all your chopping and stuff, maybe a half hour to put all of this together. Um, it's gonna, ideally, it's going to come to a boil, which it is starting to do right now, um, and then simmer for just a few minutes so that the carrots and the, the harder vegetables like carrots and the butternut squash, if you put, um, you can put potatoes in it if you want to, um, chopped up kale, you know, really anything you want, turnips, anything that you have that your family likes to eat, and probably a really good way to get some veggies into kids that don't love veggies. So that's coming along. I'm going to go ahead and put my chicken in, which, as I said, I just browned it. You could just do this with the veggies, especially since it's not cooking that long. Um, and again, if you were using pork or beef or sausage or anything like that, I would also brown it maybe a little bit before it goes in. So that is a good amount of stew. Depending on how many people you're serving, this will last a few days for lunches and stuff. And then this is totally optional, but I really like it when it's creamy, so I'm adding another cup of milk right to the soup. And again, I would let this simmer a little longer than I let it simmer, but um, you don't need to stand there and watch it cook. A watched pot never boils, as they say. And stir that in nicely. Coconut milk would be awesome in this, I think, especially if you're using some sweeter veggies like um, carrots and the squash and stuff like that. I think coconut milk would be really awesome. And then for the dumplings, and ideally this would be really simmering and really hot by now, but it'll be fine with us just going ahead with this. It's, you can see it's kind of starting to simmer around the edges. Um, what we're going to do, this is a pretty small scoop, but it'll still work. It's just going to make small dumplings. And I'm just going to scoop it right in there. And you can round them if you want to. You can use just a spoon if you want. They don't have to be perfectly shaped or anything. And what's going to happen is they're going to boil on the bottom, and then this top of them is going to steam. And you can actually go in and turn them over halfway through if you want to. Or before you serve them, I usually flip them over with a spoon. And this is, like I said, this is like your bread with your soup. So you don't even need to heat up some bread or cut bread for it because it's an all-in-one meal really and with the spinach and all the other veggies in there you don't really need a salad so I mean you know some chocolate ice cream with homemade caramel sauce and a little chicken and dumpling casserole or a soup you've got dinner already made so once this is done I'm going to put the cover on turn the heat down a little bit because I still have it on high. And let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And we'll post a picture when it's all done and ready to serve. Um, I'm just going to separate these a little bit so that they're, they don't cook all together in one huge clump. There those are, lid on top, and turn it to medium, medium low so it can just simmer. Um, and I'm making this in this beautiful Emile Henri um, Dutch oven. You can use a pot soup pot or whatever you have. Love the Emile Henri because it can go on the stove top or in the oven. It's really versatile and really beautiful. Um, we sell them in the black and also in red. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got dinner made, just wait about 15, 20 minutes. You can take one of your dumplings out and cut it or break it apart to see if it's cooked in the middle and you'll know when it's cooked. If it's gluey and 
uh, and gooey, then it's got to go for a little bit longer. But um, 15, 20 minutes, and you've got dinner. Um, so perfect for a weeknight, perfect for a busy family, hearty, healthy, and hot. And that is it for tonight. Come see us if we can help you out with any of your kitchen and cooking needs. And otherwise, we'll see you next week with Avery making banana muffins. It's going to be awesome. See you next week.